I just stopped right there and I talked to the camera for like 45 minutes, I swear. I, I don't know when to shut up sometimes. I don't know how much of that will make it in the video, but it got pretty hot while I was sitting there. I had to put the chapstick on, take off my hat. I'm sweating 105, but I'm out having some fun. I'm actually doing doing a little testing. I got, I got you know, drive shaft on the Jeep and I've got the, um, the new shelf in here. And I'm out just seeing how it works out. I did a video putting this shelf in and this is the first time having it out on some semi rough terrain and it seems to be doing really good. It doesn't make any noise. Uh, the boxes don't rattle. Um, there was one thing I didn't show in the video. There's some little rubber strips that actually go in the, in the tracks, the tracks where I showed the bolts can slide back and forth. I have one of the little rubber strips right here I, that I cut. So it's, um, it just kind of grooves down into that T slot. And what happens is you put two of these in there and the boxes actually sit on the rubber rather than plastic to metal. So if there is any movement, you can't hear it because of the rubber. It's a nice little, you know, nice little extra thing to keep the noise down. But speaking of noise. So I put this, I did this uh, about three weeks ago, maybe now. And I had made an appointment because I, I, I made the decision to get a new drive shaft. So if you're not familiar with the video where I rip the, the boot off the slip joint of the, the factory drive shaft, there was the second time I did it. First time I did it, I, I think I clipped it on a rock. It was a rock that kind of stuck out at a point where the tires went farther. So the, the first thing that's gonna hit is whatever's in the center of your, of your truck and that's what hit. But the second time, I, I wasn't doing anything really extreme, not really. I mean, it was some good articulation, but the drive shaft hit itself on, on one of the skid plates underneath, a factory skid plate. And so this, the stock drive shaft is really, like really big. It's like this big until it gets to that slip joint, then it goes down to about this size. And then where it goes into the rear yoke, it's, it's even smaller. It's very strange. So when I lifted this truck, I had to put on a, an aftermarket front drive shaft right off the bat because I changed the lower control arms. And in, in doing that, you need to change the, the drive shaft because of the angle of the, of the yokes. So I had a JE reel drive shaft, I believe, that I, I put on the front, but I left, I left the factory drive shaft in the rear. So after this, this second time, and here's the thing, to replace that boot, you have to drop the drive shaft and slide the boot on because it's, it slides on. It's not like one of those split designs, which is better, but it's more of a pain in the butt. So I just decided, screw it, I'm gonna get a new drive shaft. There's a place in town, machine shop, that specializes in custom drive shafts. They make their own, and they're, they're smaller. I'll try and get a picture one of it for you. They're a lot smaller and it looks like it's got plenty of clearance now. So I'm kind of about testing that. But the thing was, I had, I had my local shop do that. I just, I didn't feel like doing that. It's been really hot. The humidity's dropped, which is good. So I, I asked the guys that, you know, they, they had up on a lift. I said, hey, while you're there, this thing's been squeaking like crazy, like from day one when I lifted it. Can you guys try and figure it out because I was under there finding Zerk fittings and everything to try and grease up the, the Heim joints. But we narrowed it down. It's the, the two rear shocks. Now these are coilover shocks. And I don't know if it's the Heims at the bottom or my, what I've always thought, it's the, it's the spacer that holds the upper and lower coil. There's two different coils, two different spring rates. What it does, it's progressive. It allows it to have a softer ride and get articulation, but then as it comes down, you go on to the harder second spring. And it's, it's one of the best off-road setups you can have. 
The only problem is it's loud. It's like a racing setup. Like if you've ever run race shocks from King or Fox or any of those, if you've ever had an, uh, an off-road specific vehicle, they're loud. The check valves in the shocks are loud, the springs, the squeaks, all that stuff. That's what's going on with this. So I don't know if it's because I've been driving the Land Cruiser, which is, you know, stock and quiet and everything, but it seems louder now, now that I had them look into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to have to pull them off. I'm going to take the springs off and, and really investigate the cup, that sliding cup and see if I've had these for five years. Maybe they've come out with some new technology, maybe a Teflon liner inside there. It's plastic against aluminum. So I don't know if that's what's making it squeak, but it's God awful. It's, it's terrible. It sounds like I have a hundred year old car coming down the road. And when you get on this stuff, it just squeaking like crazy. Gotta hit the rough stuff. I'm testing all this stuff out. Can you guys see the shelves? Nothing's fallen off yet. Yeah, I say yet. But it does, it's, you know, one of the things is it's not making any noise and that's really good. You know, if you're driving a long way and something is like rattling or something that drives you nuts, right? Well, it's not doing anything like that. So that's really good. I've got three or two boxes on it and my bag. In those boxes I have, uh, what do I have in there? One is not got much stuff in it at all, so makes the box light. The other one's got some uh, my cooking stuff for when I cook the foods. What's this little sign say right here? No shooting within a quarter mile of building. What building? What building? I'm on the middle of nowhere. There's no buildings out here. It's just a little tiny sign on a on a tree, maybe someone's pulling my leg. I don't see any buildings around here. Oh, here's that. Uh, I'm gonna get a picture of this. This is that thing that says Overland Trail and it's a donkey. Pretty nice areas up here. It's very, very hilly, but sometimes you'll, you'll run across an area like this. It's kind of like a almost like an open meadow, just surrounded by trees. But then on either side, the hills go up. It's pretty nice. I, I decided to stop here and, you know, hook up some of the in-car cameras that I have to, to, you know, catch some of the cool trails that I'm going down. Um, the one camera that I have, I have set it up in, in the Jeep specifically, not in the Land Cruiser, but in the Jeep because I have the roll cage in there. I have a lot more mounting options. And what I've done is I've lowered it down and set it back a little bit. And it's basically right at where a passenger's eye line would be out the front window. So it's not attached to the front window. It's back a little bit and down. I wanna, I'm hoping to uh, capture that like if you're watching the video, like you would be sitting in the passenger seat. But here's here's something here's something cool. I had an idea about doing a video specifically on all the modifications that I've made to the Jeep. And if that if you if it's something you guys want to see, then I can do the same thing. See, I'm kind of trying to do a build series on the Land Cruiser, but I haven't done anything to it yet. But the great news is I got the wheels in. They're actually at my house. I have the wheels. Now I just got to go uh, get the tires and uh, get them mounted up and it should be good to go. I'm going to go, I'm going to try out some, some Falcon AT3W, the all-terrain Falcon tires. I'm running the, the mud terrains on the Jeep here. Uh, I got this set partially used because I traded my Nittos with True Beadlocks for this set. I traded them out because I was just tired. of The Nittos weren't wearing very good for me. Uh, one thing is because I had beadlocks, you can't balance them. There's no, you can't really balance them. And they're big and heavy, the, the slab beadlocks. They're very heavy. Awesome traction and get you everywhere. But it's almost like if you only go to a place like Moab or something, that's where you'd want those things. Other than that, I never used them for what their capabilities were. So I decided to switch to this. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to make a video 
very specific, like really go over the stuff that I've done to the Jeep from stock to where it is now. And I did most of it right, right up front, like a couple months after I got the Jeep, once I got everything organized and figured out what I wanted to do, I did most of it, you know, all at the, all at the same time. <clears throat> I know some people out there interested in that stuff. So my question to you would be, if you'd like to see that, and you want to know something specific, leave it down in the comments in this video. That way I can go through the comment section and maybe you're going to say, hey, what, uh, what gears are you running? Hey, what uh, size tires? What's the offset on your wheels? What kind of roll cage is that, that secondary roll cage you got in there? Who makes that roof rack? How do you like the roof rack? What about that you know, I'm going to cover the bumpers and all this stuff, but maybe some specific stuff that you guys would like to ask. Whether you have a Jeep, whether you have an off-road vehicle, or you're just interested in, you know, mechanical stuff. I, I, I find it interesting. I've, I watch other videos where people do, um, you know, kind of uh, very, very technical modified talks about what they've done. It's not showboating, like, it's, this isn't like a, oh, I'm sponsored by so-and-so, and here's the product I put on, and this thing's the best thing ever. No, everything that's on here, I bought, and I've used for five years. So I can tell you, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, they're not cheap, <laughs> they're not cheap, but like I said, I've said it before, I can't, I can't afford cheap stuff. I can't afford cheap stuff. Like, what does that mean? Well, you buy it, it breaks, you have to buy it again and again and again. Spend, spend more money up front. I'm a firm believer in that. Now, obviously nothing is 100% in life, but I'm a firm believer of spend money up front to buy the quality item. Not just the brand name, but the quality item. That being said, there are some things, obviously, that you can, you can buy the cheap stuff, you know? whatever, kit, you know, utensils and kitchen stuff and, you know, basically throwaway items. Anything that you're going to rely on your safety or the reliability of your truck, don't skimp on it. And if you can't afford it, don't change it. This is something that I think people tend to forget. So a, a truck, a Jeep, a SUV, a crossover... These things from the factory are designed with pretty good parts, okay? They obviously have to pass all these tests and all these reliability. They have to, whatever they put on is going to be better, a lot better than any cheap stuff you want to put on there. Like say you want to do, uh, I need new shocks. So I'm going to go out to, uh, you know, the local auto parts store and buy that cool looking shock because it's uh, the color I like. You put it on there and it's crap or springs even tires. There's a lot of things that in a stock form, if you can't afford to buy the quality item, just don't do anything with it yet. And if you, if you need to save money up, do that and then get the quality item. Go with the stock. I'm telling you that a Jeep in stock form can do a lot, a lot. You know, there's, there's times I wish I left this stock. <laughs> no, that's not true. But I went places in this thing stock and it was just, it was awesome. And the Land Cruiser is another thing. It's, it's completely stock right now. Nothing has been done to it. And I'm, I'm going on all these trails. I've gone on some pretty, pretty decent. Well, let me put it this way, fun stuff, stuff that is fun and it's doing great. And that's, that's even with stock street tires. And I've said a million times, it's like the first thing you really should change. You have a stock vehicle and you want to take it off road, make sure you get a good set of all-terrain tires on it. Boom, done. If you say, oh, I can't afford to do this, that, and the other thing. Well, then don't do it. Go enjoy your car the way it is. And then maybe you're like, hey, this is perfect. I don't need to do anything. I'll save money maybe and get myself a better tent or something. Or I wanted this better little stove because I like camping more than off-roading. See, then you have you have options that you can that you can do, and I, I think that would be a, I think that would be a lot better decision than just to take whatever money you got, throw it at this because you want it to look a certain way, but you go with all these cheap parts and it ends up breaking. Then you say, well, the vehicle sucks because it broke. No, you put on crap parts and it broke. Jeeps 
for example, I'm just happen to be here. I just happen to be in the Jeep today. So Jeeps are, if not the most, they've got to be number one, number two, number three. The most modified off-road vehicle that there is, okay? I was watching a video the other day, it said something about this particular model, this is the JK. They've got, you know, the TJs, the JLs now. And then I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the Gladiator uh, lettering configuration is, but this is the JK. I think it's like, it's, I don't even know the years. Maybe it ran to, this is a 2016, I bought it in 2015. Let's just say like 08 to 18, something like that, like a 10 year stretch. There was like well over 2 million of these things made according to this video. And a lot of people, they just modify the heck out of these things because the market is so great. And then people like to say, well, Jeeps, Jeeps are unreliable. Jeeps are unreliable. But if you think about it, what I was just saying about leaving your Jeep in stock form, I'd be curious to see how many Jeeps in stock form have issues. Because the more you do to it, the harder you want to push it to see what it can conquer. The bigger the tires, all this stuff, then you're putting extra stress on everything else. So if it's the most highly modified vehicle there is, that means it, it's probably going to have more problems because not all the modifications are good. Not all of them are done professionally. Not all of them are quality parts. You can, you can make something unreliable by things that you do to it. Man, I... I can talk a lot. I don't know how much is gonna make it into this video, but I literally have been talking for like 30 minutes over there. You know, there's some, I don't know, you guys interested in this kind of stuff. There's some long form videos. I started doing long form stuff on my gaming channel, 45 minutes to an hour. And I find that you kind of can get into the video more, like you, you're, you're investing time into the video. And if it's something you really, if it's something you don't like, you're not gonna watch it, whether it's 10 minutes or an hour. But if it's something you really enjoy, you're gonna watch it a lot longer. And that long form is really working for me as well. Like I enjoy doing that more. Maybe I get on a topic or a conversation or whatever it is, it's a lot more fun. I would really like to do that with this these videos. Now, it's a lot easier once it's it's a, you know, it's 105 degrees right now. I know it doesn't look like it, but I just happen to have some clouds blocking the sun very temporarily because there there is some breeze blowing those clouds through. But it's a it's 105. But the humidity's down. So I'm not sweating. There's a little breeze, it's nice. So when it's cooler in the fall and in the winter time, when I'll be off-roading, adventuring to a location, like adventure camping. You adventure out, you find a spot, you camp, you set up, you cook, you, you know. Those obviously are gonna be longer form. Kind of like our, what we used to do on Can We Survive? We, we did that stuff where I like the long form, meaning like an hour long. Um, but in these, I don't know if it's interesting enough, you know, maybe I'd have to kind of classify what type of video it is, that it's not just all driving, it might be me bumping my gums. Now, this, I'm probably gonna do a long form on when I do the, go over the modifications that I've made to this, and I think that'll be interesting. I'll, at least I'll try and make it interesting. We, we always did, all growing up, we always did our off-roading in the winter time. We did the sand dunes at Glamis, we did all the desert stuff, you know, we did all of that stuff. It was in the fall through winter. In the summertime, we went to the lake, into the river, went to the uh, Lake Havasu, Colorado River. We did all that stuff in the summer. And out there, I don't remember there being bugs. Maybe there were, but man, you're riding jet skis and you're swimming and you're, you're drunk the whole time. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like it didn't bother me at all. And some days and some places I go, even though, like I said, it's over 100 degrees, it's not bad here. I think the humidity, there's not a lot of water around here, like lakes, like sitting water in, the, in this whole region. So there's not a lot of mosquitoes. There are a lot of cattle though. There's cattle all over up here. 
not just here where I'm at, but all the places I go and show you guys, there's cattle. And when there's cattle, there's uh, flies. And there's horses, so there's horse flies, big flies. Different, all the types of different stuff, but they're not bad, they're not bad. But they're, they're pretty aggressive, they're annoying. Like they want, they want to fight, they want to get it on. So I'm gonna go for a cruise. I've been here for about an hour and a half just sitting here. I, I on these off-road trips, I don't do this enough. Just stop and just chill. Like normally if I was camping, we would stop, we'd set up camp, you chop some wood, you know, you get all your stuff set up. I love that. And I love off-roading. That's why I think the ultimate is adventure camping. See, I don't, I, I get, I've been going over this in my head a lot. I'm not an overlander. Because the more and more I see and watch channels that are overlanders, that's not me. It's great what they're doing. I don't have the ability. I don't have the time. I have a job. I can't. I, I have multiple jobs. I can't do what they do. I can't take off for a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks and do this. I, I, so I'm not an overlander. I'm an adventure camper or an adventurer, off-road adventurer, whatever. I don't even need to put a word to it. I've been doing this all my life and it's what I enjoy. But I'm definitely not an overlander because what I see them doing is not what I do. They they have a lot of mechanical sympathy for their cars because they have to go a long way. And I feel that if I see a trail and it's aggressive and tough, that's why I build these things. That's what I want to do. I don't want them to break, but I don't want to have to to wimp out on a trail just because I've got another thousand miles to go. I don't care what's at the end. Because one of my one of my things that I've drilled into my head, one of my, I don't know, what do you call it, a motto, methodology, whatever. One of my mantras, that's a lot of M words that none of them probably work out. What I believe is this. We as human beings always look at this end goal, right? We look at this end goal. Here we are and here's this end goal. That's our goal. All right. And when we get there, it's like, oh my God, look at this. It's so beautiful. It's so great. Now what? And you do that a couple times, then you're old. <laughs> you know, time doesn't stop for anybody. My motto is this yes, I always like to have an end goal, but you know what? It's this journey in between. It's all those little dirt roads and those rough tracks and that weird place that you've never been. It's the journey in between that is golden. That's the good stuff. That is it right there. And if, if you're overlanding and you're like, okay, we're gonna do this, yeah, we got, we, we, I'm not gonna go down that because we, we can't afford to break anything, we're gonna keep going, and we get to this awesome place, and that's cool. But the journey, you just see it going by your window, right? That's why I'm not, I'm not an overlander, you know? I, one, I don't have the time to make long travels, but two, I love the journey in between and I would get so sidetracked, I would never make it to an end destination. I would never make it there. Whether it's I get lost and having too much fun in some weird random area, and I definitely don't want to say, I don't want to go down that trail because, you know, we can't afford to, we got to take care of the vehicles. Well, of course you got to take care of the vehicles. But what fun is it to have a lifted truck with off-road tires and four-wheel drive and lockers and all this stuff if, if you don't have some fun? I'm an adventure off-roader. That's, you want to put a name to it? Adventure off-roading and camping. That's what I do. Well, I didn't think it was going to get any hotter, but as I got down here to the valley floor, uh, it's at 114 now. Yeah, 114. And this is still, we're still up. I'm just uh, 30 miles south of uh, Williams, Arizona. So it's still pretty high elevation, maybe 6,000 feet or 5,500 feet here maybe. But yeah, 114. Wow, they must be hitting record highs down in the lower lands down there. That is crazy. All right, well, if, I'll tell you what, if it gets any hotter, I'll just take a picture of it with my phone to let you know. But 
it's pretty warm it's two o'clock so just to let you know it's two o'clock 114 degrees and I'm heading home because yeah it's just setting up cameras and stuff I even brought the drone with me but it didn't come out it didn't come out too dang hot <laughs> all right that's gonna do it for me you guys hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for watching